Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by the founder and CEO of the Ultimate Endgame League, Titus Walker. His organization is one of the most largest and diverse esports organization in the world. They have over 400 professional gamers participating in 33 different games. So we're going to be talking to him about what exactly esports and what his organization does and anything else that he wants to tell us about his organization. So Titus, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate you having me. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? So, um, yeah, my name is, is Titus. Uh, as you stated, I uh, have a background. Actually, I, I started my careers about uh, 12 years ago in real estate um, and did uh, real estate investing. So I uh, would buy and sell properties and, you know, flip houses, that type of stuff. Um, got really deep into the business world and created a few businesses. Um, all that didn't do too well, um, but I learned a lot throughout that process and kind of started to, um, I've, I've always loved gaming. And so, uh, when I was a kid, I had a lot of, you know, the, a lot of people around me saying, you know, that you wouldn't make money gaming and they, I listened to them saying that. And so I kind of just figured gaming was like, almost like bad for you in a way, um, which is still kind of the narrative around gaming. And, um, but I, once I got older and, and kind of dove into esports a little bit, I recognized that most uh, esports leagues weren't too, they were great on the gaming side, but not great on the business side. And uh, essentially, most of them um, had no way of making any profit. But the biggest issue or biggest hole that I saw in esports was, um, was just the, the fact that they all focused on one specific game title so they had a community that was built around one specific game and so that's kind of how i began my journey and and uh started kind of changing the world of gaming so for those who don't know explain to everybody what esports is and what your league actually does sure um so esports is um, it's electronic sports. Essentially, it is video games, um, but in a competitive way. So where you're on a stage, you're competing for um, cash prizes normally and or a trophy. Um, and so essentially you're you're competing in some specific video game title or that's how it was or, or still is um, for the most part. And so what we do differently, rather than having competition where it is just, let's say, a uh, Call of Duty um, video game is, is a big one. Let's, most competitions, well, actually all competitions outside of ours, focus on only that title, only that game, Call of Duty. What we have done, we've created a formula that um, is essentially, the, it makes the competition about gaming as a whole instead of just that one video game and um, the reason that that's important is in business as a whole and then i'll bring it back to real estate if i was to build an entire house on someone else's land that wouldn't be the best business plan i could build a, a, a big old apartment complex but if someone else owns the land it doesn't really matter that I own the apartment complex because at any point in time, they can kick you out. And it's the same thing with esports. If you create an entire community, it doesn't matter how many millions are in that community. If you don't own the game that you compete in, that game at any point in time can say, yeah, no, I, I don't want you to be a part of this anymore. I'm going to go ahead and kick you out because you're more just the middleman. Um, and I'm going to start running these tournaments myself. Um, you know, thanks for building the community for me. 
but I want all of it now. Uh, and so what we did was we created a formula that focuses on the art form of gaming. And the way that happens is you, we put 33 different games on um, basically like a roulette wheel um, and you spin the wheel and uh, whatever game pops up, the teams have to compete each against each other in that game. And you continue to do that and each game becomes worth one point. So we focus on the, the art form of gaming and what those games teach as opposed to just any specific game. So how, how does someone become a professional gamer? What do you have to do to call yourself a professional gamer? Well, um, a professional anything is somebody that gets paid to do it, right? Um, but so, so that, that's kind of the, the key. Uh, you call yourself a professional gamer if you get paid to do it. But in, in normal esports, in order to become a professional gamer, you actually have to play one video game title for, you know, 10, 8 to 10 hours a day, trying to get noticed or sponsored by some uh, esports team. And then that team picks you up, pays you a, a, a small salary and puts you into some tournament where you'll, where you'll compete and get a percentage of that, that winnings. Um, with our league, because we're more focused on gaming as an art form, you actually can join our league just by going to your local tournaments at arcades that we participate with. So we have arcades all throughout right now, um, around on the East coast, mostly on the East coast, but, um, you can compete in just your local tournaments and by winning those tournaments, you actually earn points towards becoming a professional gamer. Um, and as you build your way up, you get put onto a leaderboard um, and then a draft happens. We, we Just like the NBA, NFL draft, we actually just had one two days ago. We had 200, um, well, 200 people trying to join the league, but we only had uh, the draft. There was only about 60 new rookies that were drafted from that pool. And, uh, and so re really joining or becoming a professional is is as easy as going to your local um, arcade or land center or, you know, um, eventually a Dave and Buster's or a movie theater, anywhere with a TV that participates with us. Um, and this season we're competing uh, for a hundred thousand dollars. Wow. That's, that, that's pretty good right there. So tell us about, and if some of the listeners may be familiar with some of the, professional e-gamers out there to tell us some of the people that you have in your league. Sure. Um, so we have uh, quite a few well-known gamers. Uh, NY Chris G is actually the he's top five fighting game player in the world. Um, he has the most world titles under his belt. Um, it really in the world, as far as across different games, different fighting games. He's, you know, as good as it gets. We have the, the reigning uh, champion of uh, Dragon Ball Z, Legendary Pred, um, uh, Mortal Kombat professionals, uh, Jojo Senpai, um, and Chicken Tech. Uh, we have uh, Marty McFly, who plays uh, Street Fighter, as a professional Street Fighter player. Um, we have one of our uh, leadership, actually, was a professional NBA 2K player. We have quite a few 2K uh, professionals in our league. Um, we have a couple of NFL players, actually, in our league. Amon Green, uh, former NFL uh, star. We have celebrities um, like uh, some of ASAP Mob, um, which is ASAP Rocky's team, is actually uh, in our league as well as a, an investor of one of the teams. So quite a few um to name but uh but yeah we're we're definitely moving in the right direction so if i wanted to invest in an esports team uh what, what would i need to get that done um so it would be it we actually set it up like a franchise so it's just like buying like an nfl or an nba team so we would uh conduct you know uh the background check because you're going to be working with the players directly um, so we would make sure that, you know, there's there's no issues there. Um, and then once that's done, we would work with you on figuring out what your plan is for the team. Because, again, you'd be representing the league. 
So we'd want to know that you're going to have a general manager in place. Um, if you don't have one, you can, you can manage the team yourself. But otherwise, we do have general managers that we can kind of put in place for you. But otherwise, um, as of now, the teams um, that we have available sell for anywhere between 150 um, to 200,000. Well, what do you see your league going like in the next five, 10 years? Well, what do you see yourself at with your league? Oh, man. Um, five to 10, I would say in the next three years, um, we will be the largest esports, um, the largest and most relevant esports league in the world. Uh, in three years, I, if you say the word esports, you will be talking about the UEL. Like, that that is that's where we will be in three years because as far as i'm concerned every other esport and you can kind of see it if, if anybody that follows esports right now is seeing that the the world of esports is is not it's not dying but it's becoming it's having a lot of issues a lot of a lot of things coming up that are making esports almost impossible to stay alive because like I said before, what I knew would happen is starting to happen. You know, um, games like Super Smash Brothers are now in Nintendo are, are pulling their games and saying, you can't play my game. Like, I'm not allowing you to run tournaments in my game. Right. Um, games like Call of Duty are creating their own league. Street Fighter creating their own league. Tekken. So so now they're, they're taking away from the 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 people that have created the communities of esports. And saying, we're just going to do it ourselves, which, of course, it makes sense to do it from a business perspective. Um, but most of these businesses don't know how to run tournaments. They know how to create games. They don't necessarily know how to run a good tournament. And so you're seeing a lot of the players pulling back and saying, yeah, I don't you know, I don't want to do this anymore in this format. And that's where a lot of those players are now joining our league, because what we do is it's, it's more fun. It's more competitive. Um, and it allows you to, uh, it, you actually make more money too. <laughs> it, we, we pay the most out of any other league, um, period, because you're not having some team take, you know, 80% of your winnings. So how did you come up with the name uh, of your league, Ultimate End Gamers League? Um, so it's, it, so I, when I first started the league, I had, um, other partners that we kind of went back and forth and. We're trying to figure out, um, we knew that we came up with the word end gamers and end gamer and end gamer is a master of all gaming. So essentially it's somebody that focuses on the art form of gaming. And, um, and so we knew that was going to be in the title at some, in some way. And originally we were thinking, we were throwing up all different kinds of, um, names and we actually named it something different in the beginning. Um, but then. Um, those partners actually ended up leaving and I had to recreate the name. So we had to, I had to go back to square one and, um, and it just clicked. I don't know. It was, it was really the night of, um, the night that the other partners decided they didn't want to, um, be a part of it. I was up pretty much all night, um, thinking, and that's normally when the, the best ideas come to me. And, um, yeah, it just clicked like, you know, I don't it, it, the higher power, God, whatever you believe in. I heard it speak to me, and it was just Ultimate Gamers League, um, and that was that was that. And we kind of just have uh, have run with it ever since. So, tell us about any current or upcoming projects that you're working on that people need to know about. Sure. Um, so we just we just had the draft. Um, it was April first. So we have all new rookies in the league. And um, essentially, they'll be the competitions start on uh, Thursday, actually, this Thursday. And we have games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and they're streamed live. We have a huge production team. It's about 40 to 50 people that put together the um, the production and uh, commentators and casters and um, referees and all that um, that that uh, essentially compete every Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday on UEL Esports. Um, you can watch it on Twitch, on YouTube, um, on Facebook, but, um, but yeah, you can check that out every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That season will run 
um, up until July, we have our finals. And so essentially the teams are trying to make the playoffs. And so they'll be competing every week uh, with that goal in mind. And then the teams that make the playoffs get a payout. They get a bonus um, for making the playoffs. And then if you win the division, you get another bonus of about 5,000. And then if you win the, um, if you win, well, if you win the conference, you get about 2,000 and then another 5,000 for the division. And then, um, you know, the season is for $100,000. So this, this last season, we actually just had that finished up about three weeks ago. And it was for $40,000. So this is the, the biggest tournament we've done. Um, the previous ones were all for twenty to 40000 And then um, this one is, is, is a big one. And we plan to only raise it up from here. So throw out that contact information uh, as well as the time. So if uh, people want to check out the live stream of the games, they can. Yeah, you can go to Twitch. Uh, dot tv and then um, put in uel esports that's uel esports um and you can also find us on instagram facebook um our website everything is uel esports or uel esports.com um and then you can and it's at six uh the games are at 6 p.m on thursday and friday and then uh 3 p.m saturday and 2 p.m sunday you can find all of our schedules on our uh, Instagram as well. Um, and then for um, contact info for email, you can email us at info at uelesports.com. And uh, yeah, you can check us out. Like I said, every, every week we have another competition um, and they are very fun to watch and extremely fun to play. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out. Close us out with some final thoughts, maybe something I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Sure. Um, so something that has th this season um, has been extremely exciting. And I think that anybody listening, um, if you want to be a part of it or you want to um, or you have something that you think you can add to this esports thing, it's a it's a fairly new market. Um, and it's, it's definitely in its infancy stage. So it's the perfect time to get involved and to, you know, if you're, whether you're a business person looking to invest or whether you're just a, um, a gamer who's looking for, to be able to live out their dream as a pro gamer, um, we have something for you. So make sure to reach out to us, uh, info at uelesports.com, or you can find us on all socials at info or at uelesports.com. Ladies and gentlemen, check them out, uelesports.com. If you know of any gamers or you're a gamer yourself, follow, rate, review. Share this episode to as many people as possible. Check out their live events. If you have any guests or suggestion topics, send them to cjackson102 at cox.net. Please be sure to tell a friend about the show. And thank you for listening. Titus, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.